This is Texans TV. With the 11th pick in the 2011 NFL Draft, the Houston Texans select J.J. Watt, defensive end, Wisconsin. And the 2012 AP Defensive Player of the Year. 2014 AP Defensive Player of the Year. 2015 AP Defensive Player of the Year is. Watt comes out of the tunnel to a thunderous roar. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Come on! Come on! All I know is... Mess with me, you got problems. That's all I know. Watt takes it across the 15. Pick six. And Watt has a down for a sack. JJ with the catch. Touchdown, Houston. Watt has a sack and the ball comes out. 100 for JJ Watt. JJ start fundraising. We surpassed 5.1 million, 8.5 million, 15 million, 20 million dollar mark. Yep, no way. Oh. <laughs> sacked by J.J. Watt. J.J. has him down. Caught J.J. Watt. Oh, my goodness. Watt needs help getting off the field. Every play, every rep, everything you've got, you put it on the line for your team. Every day, it doesn't matter. My team needs a play, and I'm going to make it. Hey, 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 hey. In his rock and roll. Well, hello. My name is Drew Doherty. This is Mark Vandermeer, voice of the Houston Texans. This is Texans 360. This is not a show we ever wanted to do because. The greatest is not going to be here in Houston any longer. J.J. Watts released by the team. It was a mutual parting of ways. And, Mark, we got all J.J. Watt in this show, which is 30 minutes long, as you know. And this is just such a weird, surreal day. But when you think of J.J. Watt, I know you've got a zillion memories about number 99, but what comes to your mind first? Well, he just is the franchise in so many ways. And you think of certain players who have been here, like Andre Johnson, you know, he's one of those. He's one of the elite. He's a Ring of Honor guy, Drew, clearly. Uh, one of the greatest players in history. We've enjoyed him here for so many years. It seems strange to think of the Texans without J.J. Watt. And it also seems strange that the Texans existed until th through 2010 without J.J. Watt. But he's just become part of the good Texans, meaning the Texans that make the playoffs on a fairly regular basis. Think of the last decade. Yeah. You've had seven winning seasons, six playoff appearances, and Watt has been here for the whole time. I know he missed 2016, but the Texans are so strongly identified with Watt, it seems strange to not have him, but every era changes, and here comes another one. Yeah, no doubt, and I remember J.J. from the very first day he got here. You got to remember, the lockout was going on, so the players were all out of the building, except for the day after all the first-round picks got to come to their respective cities. So back then, I used to meet these players at the airport, the first-round picks, put a mic on them, you know, photograph, video their uh, first day, and he comes to town, he goes upstairs, he meets the defensive coordinator at the time, Wade Phillips, and Wade, after the introduction, says, well, you wanna go downstairs and have a sandwich? And JJ said, I appreciate that, I do, but I know my time is limited and I'm leaving town here soon, so can we look at the playbook? And right then I thought, this guy's a little different. Yep. And we saw that, not immediately his rookie year, but at the end of his rookie year, and then it just took off after that, and now, we got to turn to 2014, which was a comet of a season for him. Mm -hmm. He got MVP votes, and he was the Defensive Player of the Year. It was the second time he won that award. He won it three times. So check out this mic'd up game from 2014 with J.J. Watt. All I know is, you mess with me, you got problems. That's all I know. Messing with J.J. Watt is a terrible idea. Just ask anyone who witnessed one of 2014's most amazing single game performances. What you got today, 10? You got some? Let's see. Oh, I'll show you. I'll show you. Just make sure you got a good view. Get some popcorn. 
Maybe some juju bees. A slushy? Snow caps, perhaps. Maybe some snow caps. I don't know. You're going to want to be comfortable today. Watch the show. Watch the show. Yo, shoot. are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I'm beating these guys like a drum out here. We're gonna hold all day or just part of it? This guy is, he, he can't even touch me. He's stumbling over his own feet. You've got a new left tackle in there, and he's got his hands full with J.J. Watt. Three new starters along that offensive line. I don't care who they put in there at tackle. Woo! They got to deal with us. There we go. We got him some help. All right. Finally. Finally. Mettenberger gets the snap. <laughs> Here comes Watt, Mettenberger throws downfield, incomplete. Finally some help! Finally! Woo! The pressure of J.J. Watt forcing that throw. Think of this now, what the guy's doing, he's holding on to you right at yeah. the end. That guy will never block No, he won't block me all day. Here's what you got. He's tackling me. Yeah. Make sure with that left arm, grab with that left arm. Because you're killing the guy, the guy can't block. No, he can't. Concentrate with that left arm, can't block you. That guy won't block me one time today. I'm telling you right now, this guy ain't blocked me. I'm not leaving the spot. Mettenberger gets the snap. Here comes Watt. Mettenberger in trouble. And Watt, ten and a half sacks on the year. Double digit sacks for Watt, third year in a row. Let's go! You talk about fired up. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be on the old line when he's in this rare form. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Boy, he is telling somebody, I'm getting Watt. ready to whip your Watt. tail. We're between the white lines. This is football. This is football. Welcome to the big leagues. Welcome to the big leagues. I got one word for him and one word only. That guy's having a rough day. I'm gonna stay on 67 to start and then I'll. Give me 76. Yeah, whoever the heck that guy is. Come here real quick. How many times in your life you got a chance to get 80,000 people and you're the volume knob? We get to turn it up. Let's turn it up. Let's go. Woo! On three. One, two, three. Woo! Turn it up. When you're ahead in games, this is where the opportunities to rush the passer really present themselves. First down at the 47 yard line of the Titans. Locker shotgun gets the snap. Watt knocks the ball out. JJ running for it, picks it up. 35 30 to his left and 25. He's down. JJ Watt strips. as a player. There's always something else. Now Watt is coming in the game as an eligible receiver. This is going to him. I would bet the farm. What do I got? And he'll set up as a fullback in the eye with blue the tailback. First to go at the one. Watt motions to the right side. Fitzpatrick to throw. Right side to Watt. JJ with the catch. Touchdown. Everybody. He does it again. His third touchdown reception of the season. I think go ahead and give the MVP trophy out right now. Wow. Nice talk.
Bro, I have wooed myself out. Yeah, you are going. I am you can't tired. Be able. I am tired just from wooing. After the break, J.J. Watt, a giant off the field. Texans 360 rolls on. Texans 360 is presented by Kroger, fresh for everyone. We're back on a special edition of Texans 360. It's all about J.J. Watt, Drew, Mark, and Mark. As wonderful as a player as J.J. was on the field, and he was an absolute giant, he was equally so in the community, and he raised money for all number of charities, including after the hurricane. Well, the Hurricane Harvey stuff is legendary, yeah. right? Dozens of millions. And I wrote, Drew, that we might not only talk about that for dozens of years, it might be hundreds of years you talk about his impact on the relief effort of Hurricane Harvey and the charity softball classic. I mean, that was off the chains because it started out at Constellation Field where the Skeeters play, and then it moved to Minute Maid Park. I thought, yeah, I wonder if he could possibly do this thing at Minute Maid Park. And it was like an Astros game and then some with all the Texans playing softball. Time after time after time, he was there for the city of Houston, for the folks around it, and he just brought up that charity classic. Here's the last one that went down. This is what happened. The charity classic is back. I'm excited. My teammates are excited. This place is gonna be rocking in a couple of hours. Oh, we're checking in. <laughs> We are in 37 states now across the country, and we have donated over $5 million since inception. Big dogs on the sack, right? Let's go! Man, I'm too big for that. That's a, that dunk too small, man. Man, the fence just looks so close. That ball was floating up there. It looked big. The ball looked big. It's out of there. Let's go, let's go. I'm just on a home run try. Don't mind me. Just a little home run try. Don't mind me. Yes, over one million dollars we had a lot of fun doing it defense struggled a little bit but we all had a lot of fun so it was incredible thank you for joining us have a great night after the break jj watt had a special christmas surprise in 2019 that's next on Texans 360. This award is called the Man of the Year Award, but I promise you it is so much bigger than just one man. This award is about the inherent good that lies within humanity. It is about the city of Houston and its ability to overcome adversity at a time when it all seemed lost. Let's go! Texans 360 presented by Kroger coming at you from the Ford Studios, Drew Doherty and Mark Vandermeer. And you know, the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award, he won that in large part because of the millions upon millions of dollars he raised for Hurricane Harvey mm -hmm. relief. But he started doing great things for the city the day he got here almost. Well, Drew, after the draft in 2011, you had that big gap between the draft and training camp, lockout, so there's no involvement with the team. One day, Watt hears about the Berry kids. They and their parents hurt in a car accident. The kids were, a couple of kids, paralyzed. Yeah. The parents died. It was terrible. Watt hears about this, purchases 
Texans gear at Academy Sports and Outdoors goes to the hospital upon himself. I mean, he wasn't helped by the Texans yeah. because they couldn't have any contact with him. He just did it himself. No publicity. He and the kids became lifelong friends. It's an amazing story. It says a lot about J.J. Watt. It's what you do when people aren't looking, they say, right? That reveals character. Watt has so much of it. Yeah, he did stuff like that. He made countless visits to kids in the hospital that never got publicized. Yeah. You did see a lot of the stuff that did get publicized, but he was all about when he wasn't wrecking shop in between the white lines, he was building things up, building people up, making people better mm -hmm. in the city of Houston. And a Christmas or two ago, back before the pandemic, he had a chance to do some nice things for a lot of folks at the Mission of Yahweh. We are very excited to be here. I'm JJ, this is my fiance Kay. It's the holiday season, we've heard all about you guys and so we wanted to do a little bit of our part and we wanted to bring you guys some Christmas gifts. So what we did is for a lot of the kids, we got a Christmas wish list from you and we tried to fulfill the wishes as best we could. For the women, we have presents for you guys as well. We have shoes for everybody. We wrapped them and stuffed them all ourselves so if the wrapping is bad, that was me. <laughs> I was learning as I went. I'm not very good at wrapping big presents, so I tried, but we're really excited to be here. We're so thankful that you guys were willing to let us come in, and we really hope you like it. Is that a motorcycle? Yeah. Wow. In a car. No way. That is cool. Who's your favorite Paw Patrol character? Uh, Steve. Yeah? Steve. Uh, what's her name? Do you know? Camille. Oh. Nice to meet you. Merry Christmas. I'm glad. I'm glad. Well, I'm glad you got one. What you got? I got the shoes. You got some shoes? Nice. Oh, those are cool. Oh, my pleasure. Do you like them? Yeah. Oh, Merry Christmas to you. After the break, kids love J.J. Watt. Don't go anywhere. Texans 360 is back in a flash. Let's go. We need to play. 13-0 deficit. You're really up against it here. Mark, I can't express the importance of not allowing Buffalo in the end zone here. Third down and eight at the Houston 12. He's got time, and he's sacked back at the 23-yard line. J.J. Watt, and the crowd erupts. J.J. went right around Cody Ford, who's been reinserted into the game, and I can only imagine that he may not be back in after that. Texans 360 is back. It's all about J.J. Watt on this episode, Drew and Mark. And between the lines, mm -hmm. what's your best J.J. Watt memory, the one that stands out? All right, I, you know, I'm going to go pick six. But before that, before that, I mean, Which we had pick a... pick six? Well, we had a couple of good ones, yeah. uh, obviously, to choose from, more than a couple, because the, the one this year was great on Thanksgiving, and you had the big sack on Josh Allen in the playoff game last year against Buffalo, turned that game around. Uh, and I love the touchdown he scored against the Colts in 2014, Thursday night primetime. Even though the Texans didn't win, there was a lot of momentum at that point. Yeah. The place went nuts. But, Drew, the J.J. Watt play is against Andy Dalton in mm -hmm. the 2011 playoffs with Watt picking off Dalton, taking the pass into the end zone, and that launched J.J. as a national superstar, and it helped the Texans win their first ever playoff game. That was tremendous. Yeah, that would have been my choice as well. I'm going to go with Oakland 2014. J.J. Watt lines up at tight end, and I was you know, up in the press box typing, and somebody elbowed me and said, hey, J.J.'s in the game on offense. I look up, and he catches a touchdown. Mm. He was always doing something different, just like he was when he got with the kid reporters in 2018. What's going on, guys? Excited to be on another episode of The Kid Reporter. Have you guys been practicing since last year? All right, this I've is going great so far. Look. This is going great. Either of you guys got a girlfriend? I'll talk about that later. Okie dokie. Okay. Okie dokie, that's great. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not supposed to be asking the questions you are. Let's go. What are you scared of? Nothing. I don't believe that. 
Well, if my mom gets mad, then her. But other yeah. than that, nothing. What about Thanos? Who? Thanos. No. He's a fictional movie character. Do you make your brothers call you Man of the Year? They've been calling me that their whole lives. So this is just this is just a confirmation for them. They don't call me that, no. They, they barely stood up and clapped when I won. Do you guys have brothers, sisters? I have, yeah. a, I have two brothers. Yeah? Who wins? Me. Who is the older one? Yeah, guess, older guess who the oldest is in my family. Me. Same. Yeah, so we win. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Sorry. What superhero would you want to be? That's tough. I mean, I like Tony. I'd probably be Tony Stark. I guess that's Iron Man. Sorry. Street name. He's just a normal dude in a robot suit. Yeah, but that's the awesome part of it. Like, you get to choose when you want to be a yeah, like, superhero, and then yeah, you can be yeah, chill, like, normal. The thing is, you can just be like any average Joe, and then you can just automatically jump into a robot suit. Yeah, you're a superhero. But it, yeah, but if you're the Hulk and you get angry at the wrong time, then you're in a bit of a predicament. If you had your own show, what kind of show would it be? Uh, bless you. My show, bless you. Uh, my show would be called What's Up. And I would just go around asking people what's going on. Well, that'd be weird. Yeah, and then you never know. I mean, in today's world, anything could happen. I mean, like, it's weird and awkward at the same that's time. That's the point. That, that's, that'll sell you a lot of TV shows. This is weird and awkward all at the same time, so I think we're winning combo. You know, one of those kid reporters is one of your sons, and that was back in 2018, and now that guy, he sounds like James Earl Jones when he talks. Yeah, he's like, hi, Dad. <laughs> Completely different situation now, and it's fun to see that. Yeah, it is fun to see that. We had a lot of fun watching J.J. Watt over the years. We're going to miss him. Uh, he's one of the best to ever do it. So thank you, J.J. Watt, for everything you did on the field and off the field. Mark, appreciate you coming on the show today. We appreciate Tyler Marcotte and the folks putting the show together, like Nick Patterson and Connor Sangera, as well as Tyler Sudarth and many, many more. Till then, we'll see you later, and go Texans. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to know when we post new content.